What's up guys, Joe Holland here. Welcome to another edition of Look What Joe Picked Up for This Ice Fishing Ice Camping Season. Coming from your favorite ice fishing consumer. I buy the stuff or get the stuff and test it out so you don't have to. <laughs> oh man. Got a, I didn't think I'd be able to fill a table this year after the last couple of years. You'd think I'd have enough stuff, but clearly I didn't. So let's go over the stuff I picked up for this ice fishing season. Man, there's a lot of stuff here. And if you guys want to see a review of everything from last year, if you didn't follow the channel along as the season went on, I think I'll throw together a video just going over everything in these product videos. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. If I get a bunch of people interested in that, I'll definitely run a review over every single one of those products. And I'll do the same next year after putting everything here through the test. You guys that watch the channel know that I put everything through the test. So this is the new ice fishing stuff for this year of 2024. Super pumped to use this stuff and show it to you guys. Let's go. All right, let's dive right in on the big stuff. Get them out of the way. All right, so here, this is the Outbreak 450 by Eskimo. If you're wondering why I have this, because this is the first tent that I ever bought. The first pop-up. I bought it because of the door. That's uh, shaped like a human, like a regular door. I'm not built like a triangle, so I can't really fit through those triangle doors. So that's why I went through with it originally. They have revamped just a few things on it, but not enough to buy a new one. But I ended up giving away my old one. Uh, There's like a couple of kids that were uh, like a, a guy and a girl that were trying to they're going to try to live in the woods this winter. I guess they've had some hard times. So I ended up giving them my wood stove, my 450, and my floor from that first setup. So no big deal. I picked up another one. I'll build another floor. And I'm going to get a new heat system for this year anyway. So there's a 450 there. There's also a 650 there, which I'm super, super jacked about. I had a, I fished out of one. No, I fished out of two last year. Two of my buddies had one last year, and I was able to fish out of theirs. And... Just thought it was like the perfect size if you got a crew. You know, we fished five or six guys out of it. If we put everybody to the perimeter, it was big enough. So I thought, you know, that's a really, really nice big tent. Donnie and I can camp out of it if for some reason we don't want to camp out of the 850. Or if we have an overflow, you know, if, if some other guys are going to join us, I'll have two pretty large tents we can camp out of and cook out of and be super comfortable. Or bring that one and just fish out of it when we're sleeping out of the 850. So I think I have the sizes pretty well covered right now. I'm going to be running the 450, the 650, and the 850 uh, from Eskimo. Love them. Strongest ones built. Can't say enough about them. I use them. Use them every day. So those are the big items. This one you guys will be surprised to see this year too but i wanted to try this out for just hole hopping and uh i just thought it's always a good idea to have one in the truck as a backup just in case you forget your batteries or forget to charge your batteries on your ion and uh, i always have like a milwaukee drill on me in the truck so i picked up the eight inch pistol bit gonna give that a spin this year everybody that runs these say this is the quickest model so it'll be in the truck if i need it and maybe I'll use it whole hopping for crappy. All right, I got a, uh, a measuring board for all you guys that doubt how big these fish are in Maine. I always measure anyway, but this one's like an official bump board. It's catch. Picked this up from uh, Fish USA, I think, in the last package I just got. I have two more big items coming that I wasn't able to get in time for this video. But one of them, I'll bring you a separate video on are some rods I'm going to be fishing this year. I'm super, super pumped about. I met this company in Minnesota. It's one of the biggest rod companies in the ice fishing world. Definitely the most innovative. And I loved their rods. I love the feel of them, the strength of them and everything. So I'll be throwing those this year. And the other one is a Gamakatsu like tackle storage system that's coming too that I saw my buddy Paul posted a video on and I was like, I gotta have that. So that's on its way too. So, But this is a bump board. It's got the 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 actual bump side so you can push the fish's head up to it close the mouth get a good honest measurement and i'm thinking about joining a few of those like uh fish donkey tournaments and you've got to have an official bump board for for that i'm hoping this one will work for it let me know in the comments if 
if they'll accept this for a official bump board. But now I have the bump board. All right, some minnow stuff. Uh, just got a standard like an aquarium net, but this this one floats. So it's pretty nice and it's really big. So when I'm fishing pike or want to get a big scoop of shiners, if I want a little scoop, there's your standard like 99 center. And then this thing's pretty cool. I'm pretty jacked about this item for this year. This fits in a five gallon bucket. And my dad had invented something like this for live wells for bass boats like 20 to 30 years ago. And now I'm starting to see stuff like this on the market. So, hey, we should have done something with it, Dad. But this one's from Lakewood. It folds up, you know, nice and small, but it'll fit in a five-gallon bucket. So when you put this in first, then fill your water up or put your water in first, and then you put your bait in, you can lift it up and then individually pick out the bait you want. You know, if you lost your net or your net froze in or you've broken your net, which we've all done while we're ice fishing. So that's kind of a cool product. I'm excited to see how that holds up in the winter, in the ice, in the cold weather in the cold weather and cold water picked up another pair of stable icers uh these things these are rugged like these are the most rugged ones on the market um they're not like the best ones i don't think because i think something lighter and a little bit more flexible is better but they will protect your head and keep you from falling and i've never really had a problem with them other than wearing out the screws will fall out and you won't be able to get other screws in you got to kind of pick other spots to put them but but they work good enough and they're good enough for me and you don't have to take your boots off to to get these on which is nice and you can just leave them on oh picked up a couple of these bottles at the walmart you can get these for like i think two for under ten dollars at the walmart and then if you go to some local places they're like 10 bucks each so i always grab a few of these just for cooking i bring a 20 pounder most times with a hose when I'm ice camping, but it's handy to have these for when you're jumping around, running around, or just want to get something quick going. Speaking of camping, I picked up some pretty hard, like plastic uh, plates and bowls and some utensils to have for, for camping and cooking for Donnie and I, you know, like paper plates are good too, especially when you have a wood stove, you can burn it. But otherwise, you know, these things shouldn't break, I'm hoping. And it's something necessary that, that I need for eating on the ice. Going along those same lines, I went back to the original, the old school Coleman, just the two burner. I think it's like 10,000 BTUs. Yeah, it says 20, but that means each. Uh, this one's just like the standard bulletproof one that I grew up with. It's got, I, I don't even know if it has an auto start on it. It's just such a standard uh, the one I was using, I went to like an upgraded version of it and it did not hold up well. The The buttons, the auto start stopped working right away and the controls were just terrible to try to keep a temperature and it would just climb way too hot really quickly or it would shut itself off and just leak gas. So I got away from that other Coleman, not a big fan of it. It didn't hold up well like in the, in the sled towing behind the snowmobile either. It took quite a beating, so I'm hoping this one will be just like it used to be, you know, in the old days. If this is what I grew up with. All right, I got two new ways to poke through the ice. Uh, you may have seen this one last year. I don't know if I had this in the video. This one, my friends at Sebago Bait gave me. This one's an Amish-made ice saw. I'm jacked up to use it. I've heard really, really good things about it. And then this is Eskimo's two-piece that comes apart, so it packs a lot easier. Ice chisel, um, super sharp. It's got the, the graduated serrated blade on it. And, you know, these are two ways to get through the ice early on, or for this one's for safety reasons, too, for checking the ice as you're going out. And along those same lines from Eskimo, this is what they call the redneck chisel. Uh, my buddy Pat's always had something like this. And I always liked it. It's, uh, you got your hammer, you got actually a nail claw on that end. You know, if you got to pull any spikes out or, or any of your, uh, your big twisties out. And you could actually use that side to chisel away with too. And then this side's got a chisel too, and they, they have covers. So, you know, when you're fishing ultimate cold and your trap gets frozen in, rather than just yank your jack trap up and bend the real bolt, this will be nice to get down through and and uh get down to the ice so i'm pretty pumped to have that that'll just ride like in the back of my snowmobile in the storage box and it's a really good safety tool for other things you could pry with it you could pound with it 
um, if you lose lock your keys in your truck, that's your uh, your key to get in. Another thing in that lineup of the bait fish, I'm gonna try this one out. This is a USB chargeable bait aerator. Um, Norse makes it. I've never seen one before. It's read just reading the package. Ultra quiet, super efficient, engineered, tested cold weather. But it's got an aerator stone, a clip, and an air tube, and it's just a USB powered bait aerator so I can run it off my Milwaukee batteries I can run it off my power pack or it'll run I guess until it runs out of battery on its own so we'll try it this year these are some pretty cool things from clam that I picked up at fish USA that I'm excited if they work um when you're when you have all your jig rods and you put them together the hooks always snag each other and then all of a sudden you know they're all ripped up lined up together it's just a big mess so these things are actually individual bait covers that are velcro and they'll cover up like different sizes i didn't know how how the sizes were so i bought every different size i could and it looks like i have pretty good coverage there so you can get like a rattle trap in there you can get um you know various lures different sizes there and right down to your tungsten head so it one will hold it to the rod and two, keep it from getting like a big tangle. So those things I think will be worth their weight in gold this year. Fishing line, uh, I'm not too partial. Like I've always used Power Pro. So we're gonna try this one. This is a Super 8 Slick V2. Uh, I like the sound that it's slick. Maybe it'll be better on the ice, but uh, that's, what, what are we running? 10 pound test there. You know, I could go 10, I could go way less for, uh, for my pan fish. And then I just picked up some basic fluorocarbon made by Seaguar, one of the best uh, fluorocarbon companies in my opinion uh four six and ten pound test just to throw in the tackle box and have different weights i picked up another one of those triple chairs from eskimo i really like these things i like how small they fold up fits in my tote sled really well which is the best part about it they're light and they're strong and you could always use another one of those you could use them as a table if you need to as well so picked up another one of those from eskimo standard all right this is a big ticket item believe it or not these are a new set of boots from L.O. Bean I've been running the L.O. Bean Warden series boots the game warden boots for the last couple of years but I don't seem to get much more than a year year and a half out of them L.O. Bean's return policy is junk nowadays compared to what it used to be so I bought a new set these are the new revamped ones they feel a little bit lighter but as far as like a leather pack boot goes, they're by far the most comfortable and durable for up to a year. <laughs> I'm hoping these last a lot longer, but I've been super happy with them in the past. They keep my feet warm. They're very low on insulation, uh, which is what I require. I'll see what they have in them. They're Gore-Tex. I think they're like a two to 400. Uh, these are Primal Loft and Gore-Tex and a vibram sole whatever but uh that's what i'm going to be running this year when i'm not running rubber boots i'll be running these those are the yellow bean game warden boots and hopefully the new ones are like a, a step or two faster than the old game warden boots because i heard the game wardens are still wearing the old game warden boots so these will keep you like two steps ahead of the game wardens seven and a half inch fishing forceps I usually just buy these when I'm in a tackle shop. You know, I have probably 10 pairs of these kicking around somewhere, but you, you like to clip them to your shirt or always have them ready for you for a quick catch and releases and getting your hook back. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I bought these. I think I hate inline reels, so I'm not sure why I bought these this year. But I do see how when you're just pan fishing and you're on crappie or bluegill, um, sunfish, I do see how it's an advantage that quick drop the straight drop the less twist and you know if it's not too windy out or if you're in a closed environment inline reels are pretty good they do they're a pain in the neck too i i hate them when the wind's blowing i hate them when they mess up but they are pretty good so i think that's why i picked these up these were like pretty high end i think on the clam the gravity elite reel um i don't really know much about them it was a late night buy, I guess, but I got some new rods coming, so we'll throw some new reels on them and try them out, and I'll let you guys know how they how they do. Let's take a look at them. Oh, one thing I don't like right away is it's just got the one reel. And which way does that go? 
All right, so it's top. That feels pretty smooth. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> you guys will be the first to know after I do. I, I promise you that. I don't even know if I if I ended the year using inlines or not. I know I ended up fishing uh, some big lake trout, so more than likely I'd switched over to spinning gear, which I like, or bait casters. But we got a couple of those to try. Uh, like I told you, I got the Gamakatsu system coming that looks phenomenal. But before then, I picked up just some Plano 3500s. Uh, use a lot of different tungsten heads, a lot of different spoons when you're ice fishing. A lot of cast masters. So I figured these boxes, you know, those are your standards. They lock and they're waterproof. Um, those are really good. So I, I grabbed a couple of those. This one's like a little higher up. The Plano Edge. This one's a 3600 and it's got like a million slots in it. I don't know if you can see all those slots or not. So it should be, it should fit a ton of spoons. I'll give it a try. You know, you can never have too much of this stuff. Even if you're not taking it out, you can always keep it at home and, and keep your stuff organized that way. Oh, this was on a clearance aisle at the Walmart. Just some swim baits, some rage swimmers, you know, uh, thinking a little bit late in the season when I'm going after some lake trout, those will be pretty good. Couple more of the boxes. This has the V-Rods in it. Uh, Acme came out with a new size this year, like an 1-8 for the V-Rods, and I'm super jacked about it. I'll show you those. Those are behind me. These are the other V-Rods. One of my favorite all-time ice fishing lures. And then Cast Masters. You cannot beat them ice fishing. It's uh, it's as good as they get, and there's there's a huge variety of them. So that's what I use to catch those giant crappie and, and most of the fish I, I'm ice fishing with. So a couple boxes full of those. Burner. Got to throw one of those in your kit for lighting your Coleman or whatever you need. All right, here's an item I had last year, but honestly, I did not take the time or get a chance to try them out. So I'm going to use them this year. I promise you that. I'm pretty pumped to have them. They're going to be awesome for cusp fishing at night. But these are the blue tips, the Max 22s with the receiver right here. So there's five of these. They're custom made now to fit on jack traps. So you can use them on your jack traps. And uh, those are going to send me a notification to the phone when I get a flag. So it's going to be awesome at night. It's going to be awesome cusp fishing and awesome anytime really during the day. Anytime you can hear a beep and and find out that you have a fish on quicker than just seeing a flag. It's always a bonus, in my opinion, to catch that fish. So we'll we'll put those to use this year. We'll get into some of the terminal tackle. Uh, these are just the hooks that I like to use. Almost all of them are, are gamakatsu. Um, you can never have too many of these things. I use a lot of octopus hooks from one to, to size six or eight. Uh, there's some mosquito hooks in there for trout fishing. Um, yeah, mostly octopus, mosquito, octopus, they're all pretty much octopus, one, two, up to three aughts, uh, I've used them up to five and six aught when I'm going for giant pike, so I always pick up these when I'm, when I'm in a bait shop just to have extras, throw them in your pocket, problem is you got too many pockets now, so you need more of these, uh, to find them, <laughs> and then all, along those lines with the terminal tackle, there's some split, there's some split rings there, uh, different ones, different types of split rings, uh, swivels, and then weights. We're not allowed to use any lead in Maine, so these are tin, I believe. Tin and bismuth weights for uh, for keeping your minerals down there. All right, there's another big ticket item by Garmin. That is the LS34 transducer. Super pumped about that. That's the one I ran last year. I have two now, so I'm going to run the 62 and the 34 and there's a spare 34 transducer for me, which I'm very, very grateful to have. I threw some quick links and chain links uh, in with my ice fishing stuff just to throw in my snowmobile in case I got to tow something out or create another hitch or anything like that. It's not a bad idea to have a few of those. I'll show you guys the new V-Rod this year from Acme. This is one lure that I'm really excited about. The V-Rod is like a classic that I've used for years, open water fishing for smallmouth, uh, lake trout, and it's just perfect for ice fishing. It's, it's one of the best vertical, super vibration, uh, sits perfectly level. There's three different slots to make it sit level for where you tie it. And they've had great sizes, you know, all the way down to 
They've had great sizes of these in the past, but they never had one really small enough for most of your pan fish and for ice fishing, you know, when you want to downsize and use something smaller. Until this year, and they came out with a 1 8 ounce. That's the one I'm excited about. That's the one I've been asking for. There it is right there in Wonder Bread. That's actually a glow. That's a glow Wonder Bread right there in 1 8 ounce. It's just a hair over an inch long. Uh, comes two treble hooks, one tie on it. And you're going to see this one. You're going to see me ice some big crappie this year on this particular lure right here. And I got it in Fire Tiger. I got it. In in like an L Live color, more natural color, and quite a few different colors. And then I have my regular lineup of V-Rods right here, going all the way up to one ounce. So it's a lure that I use a lot for lake trout, a uh, lure that I use It's a lure that I use a lot for lake trout, lure that I use for togue, and just one of the simplest, easiest lures to use ice fishing. And I'm pumped that we have it in the 1 8 model this year, about an, a little bit over an inch long. The other two baits I'm super excited about this year are both smaller versions of some smasher ice fishing lures. Got the Hyper Rattle and the Hyper Hammer right there, both smaller sizes. This one, the Hyper Rattle, is down to one inch, and it doesn't even look like it's a full inch. It's definitely a lot smaller. It's going to give a great presentation. I'm going to take it out and show you guys that thing. See how small it is? That is going to whale some crappy for me right there. So it's going to give a nice little one-two punch. Um, it's got the gliders on the tail right there, a hook on each end, and then a treble hook hanging from the middle. That one's the Wonder Bread. So I'm pretty pumped about having those this year. That's the Hyper Rattle by Acme. And then the Hyper Hammer. This one is in the 30 size. Once again, we got a smaller version and this thing's going to wail too. This thing's going to be a perch killer. It's got a hook on the tail. It's got the tail sliders. And it's got a treble hook hanging there. And I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. But it's got knockers in there that will vibrate. And for the big perch in Maine and, and our big crappie, I think that one right there is the absolute perfect size. So pumped to have that one. All-time favorite ice fishing lure, my dad got me going on these things originally are just cast masters this one's the original a lot this one's the original but it's actually different because it's made out of tungsten and it is glow in the dark so there's a handful of the dt series i like that dt series it's longer it's slimmer and it is a little bit narrower for a different presentation and it it really kicks out when you stop that and and give it a jerk so I catch a ton of fish on these. You'll see those this year on the ice. Acme's Rattle Master. It's a lot like the, the Rattle Master. It's pretty much a cast master with a rattle in it. As you can hear, they're very loud. This one's the Wonder Bread series. These are 1 8th perfect weight, perfect size for big pan fish and bass. I actually catch a lot of bass on these by accident, but that's one of the baits you're going to see me throw a lot this year right there in that color. This one's the Castmaster Bait Fish Series. As you can see, it's got an eyeball and a perch pattern on it for the ultra clear water. If they're acting finicky, if they're not hitting the regular ones, um, they'll give you more, a little bit more of a natural presentation. Little Cleo, one of the all-time best lake trout baits. I don't know why they love this thing. If you get a little bit of orange on there and a smelt color to it, that's an absolute killer on Sebago, East Grand, uh, Chizuncook, 
and Chamberlain. This paint I'm actually pretty excited to try this year. This is the Ice Winder. I've never actually run one of these, so I'll have to let you guys know how it goes. I like the profile of it. I like the size of it. I like the colors on these. So I'm pretty pumped to use these this year. Ice Winders. I got a whole handful of them in different sizes and different colors. I'll let you know how we do on these. Couple more Cast Masters in the Tungsten Glow series. Those ones are also in Wonder Bread. Uh, just a solid winner. Can't go wrong with these. Pumped to have them. Uncle Josh Wax Worms. These are already packaged up. Uh, just, you know, the bluegill gives them something to target. Gives the crappy something to target and hit. You throw these on any of the lures I've already showed you on the single hooks or treble hooks. Uh, definitely increases your bite. Moving into Tungsten Heads. This is a jackknife series. The, the hook actually goes like this. Side to side like a jackknife would, you know, open or close. From one eighth to one quarter, glow heads, and you put your best plastic on that or a minnow on that. So I'll be doing a lot of jigging this year, as you could tell from looking at my tackle box. And I'm gonna put these to use. I'm gonna this will be the first time using like a sliding hook side to side like that. So I'm pretty pumped to see how it works. Just standard tungsten heads. You can never have enough of these. These ones are glow. They're also in Wonder Bread. Uh, size three, four, and five right there. Another tungsten head. This one's the Pendu. It actually is a pendulum, and it goes up back. The hook will go up and down like this. So when you're hooked up, you should stay hooked up, and it'll. It also gives your bait a lot more action as you're sitting there. You know your your plastic will be able to wiggle. So I'm pumped to have those. Pumped to try these out this year too. Gonna be a lot of jigging, guys. Stay tuned. I picked up another hitch from Otter. I broke my hitch last year, so I got a new one. Uh, I'm going to see if I can break this one, too. All right, here's another big item I'm super pumped about. is from Packback. Uh, this is the company that I went with, with for coolers. I have that giant 88-quart uh, cooler that is just awesome that you guys might have seen in a lot of our cabin building videos where we actually open it up and it opens up into a table, too. But this one is a portable vacuum sealer battery powered vacuum seal sealer this one will be coming on the trips with me be awesome to have on the ice uh for these long trips where you don't have to let your fish just freeze up and then have to thaw them out when you get home and clean them is just clean them just clean them on the ice and then uh vacuum seal them up and you're good to go so i'm pumped to have this i'll let you guys know how this thing works this year another big ticket item i got from pack back is their byway backpack this thing is just awesome so many compartments compartments in the right places padded up uh strong grips everywhere zippers everywhere compartments everywhere uh you can never have too many of these things this is going to be great for for my camp and i could probably get most of my camping stuff in this like my safety stuff survival stuff and just stuff that i'm going to use and and need so you can never have too many of these this one's a great great pack back from pack back all right new clothing from eskimo always love getting this stuff trying it out this is a float suit this is a scout float suit super super crazy light uh you'll see me wearing this as as you uh as you check out the videos this year all right another thing from eskimo i saw this out the show and i was like i gotta have that um, I could wear them either fishing or just wear them, you know, out to dinner. They're like pretty fancy. Is uh, the pantalons, the North Shore pantalons are called. It's just this awesome material. Pockets all in the right places. I'll be wearing these probably underneath my float suit or out to dinner at night. <laughs> they're like, uh, they're kind of like dress pants. On the inside, they have like a, a felt, felt liner. And the outside's like super smooth, so might be something good to even sleep in inside a sleeping bag so I don't roll myself up into a, a sausage. But those are the pants, and then they make a vest in it too, so so that's pretty awesome right there. I'm a big fan of a vest, you know, you stay really warm and, and uh, keep your arms free, so pretty pumped to have that. All right, all right, another big ticket item right here. This one is going to replace my wood stove. Uh, the wood stove was awesome in the 850 last year, but I didn't like how hot it got and then how cold it got. And I wasn't about to be up all night feeding that thing every two hours. So rather than get a propane heater like the Buddy heater where everything gets wet and, you know, I never really had a lot of luck with the Buddy heaters. I went with a vented 
propane heater this year. This thing weighs in at 11 pounds. It's 28,000 BTUs and it's vented. So I got to go get a vent. I got to go make another vent for my window out of my Eskimo. But I'm pretty pumped to try this thing out. This thing's made by New Way uh, in, in Michigan, I believe. I, I wanted to do a deal with these guys because I have a feeling I could sell a lot of these things after using them. But I never really, I never got a hold of them. I shot them an email and never heard anything from them. So um, I'll, I'll put it to use. I'll give you guys a good, honest review of it. And I'm pretty pumped to have like a vented propane heat system that can be regulated and controlled throughout the whole night in the ice shack. So we're going to try this out this year. All right. Got a rabbit style hat. Always like these for ice fishing. And it, uh, it's made in my color. And a sweatshirt from Eskimo that's also made in my color right there, too. So, you can never have enough sweatshirts, can you? All right, I got myself an Eskimo bucket. But the cool thing is the bucket caddy by Eskimo right there, too. So, you know you got to take up all that room anyway with a, with a five-gallon bucket or six-gallon bucket. So, why not have some pockets and more storage? So, I got a bucket caddy to go with it. Our new gloves for this year. If you watch the channel, you know I don't really wear a lot of gloves, but when I snowmobile, I'm always wearing gloves. That's about the only time my hands get really cold. Can never have too many. These ones actually come with a liner, so I'm super, super stoked about those. You can take the liner, dry them out at the end of the day, and it just adds that extra insulation in there. So Eskimo really knocks it out of the park with these strong, tough kind of leather in on the inside. And then the outside's like your regular um keep your hands warm material if you guys saw the channel last year you saw i had the escape 2800 toe behind pop over tent system i got two things to add into that this year one of them is the gear net organizer the other is the shelter seat organizer so that could go on the back of the seat this one goes on the back of the tent and it just gives you more storage room. You throw your jacket, your gloves, everything in that. This one you can put lures, line, whatever you need to put in there. So cool to have those added. Probably Eskimo's biggest thing that they did this year was came out with a base mount uh, for their hub system. You know, they have the hubs in the corners. And there's the base mount. And then they built a bunch of really cool attachments. I wasn't able to get my hands on all of them, but I'll show you uh, three different ones here. So. So this is just going to clip onto that. That's a rod holder. This one is the phone holder. So that's pretty cool for when you just want to use your phone or you use it to record. And then this one is a camera mount. So that actually goes into your GoPro. And your GoPro is just mounted right there perfectly in front of where you're fishing. And it takes up the room of having a tripod in there. So pretty cool. Pretty cool to have those. Uh, it's endless what they could put on that as long as you get the base mount how many things you could put on that thing oh, a couple more pins for my otter sled and then last but not least let's get into the jack traps so these bags are like these bags are awesome for your traps this is i highly highly recommend this um i probably have too many traps and not enough sleeves but these are the sleeves that sean makes right out there in in maine and uh you, these ones are made for, I think these are the big bulbs right there. So that'll be perfect for keeping your traps in really good shape and lasting forever. I'll show you how one works right here. This is on a, like I think a standard 26 right there. So the bag will take the beading and your trap doesn't get hung up on anything in the sled. And then here's a new trap right there. I'm so stoked to have this one. I I get a little bit of pull out there with Sean since he's so awesome and, and I help him out a little bit. Um, and he... He'll save a lot of the super cool colors out for me. So if you see the grain on that thing, that's absolutely incredible. Four inch spool. Uh, what do you think I'm gonna catch on this? I'm gonna catch a lot on this. This will be one of my lucky traps this year right there. And then these are pretty cool too. Donnie and I had some leftover bird's eye and tiger maple last year. And Sean gave us the dimensions and we were able to get them to him. And he, he built me three custom traps this summer out of that wood that Donnie had cut down. So here they are right here. They've never even been opened up, as you can see. But it's uh, curly and bird's eye maple. Super, super high gloss. Four-inch spool. 
uh, orange line, main flag. I mean, these are my go-tos. You're looking at four of the traps I'm going to use this year. Uh, I think we only had enough wood for, what did we have? We had, we had enough wood for 126 in standard and 231s. So we got 231s. I'll show you one of the 31s here. These are the only 31s that I own. It's, it's one of the best all-around sizes, I believe. And uh, I'm finally getting into them right now. But, but there it is right there. And that wood, that curly maple and bird's eye maple is just absolutely gorgeous. That thing's going to stand up beautifully on the ice. Super, super smooth. Just one-of-a-kind trap right there made by Jack Traps. Thank you, Sean. Super, super stoked to have this, uh, to have these and put them to use this year. All right, guys, I think I covered everything in the video that's already here. Like I said, I have a, a little tackle storage system coming in, and I got some new rods coming in that I'm really jacked about. So stay tuned for that. I'll shoot an update on those. I will shoot a review on all these products if you want me to. If you guys want to see a, a product review video from last year or even the year before, I'd love to shoot one for you guys if you're interested in it. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you're excited to see me use this year. And let's talk ice fishing. I'm going to shoot a live video here pretty soon. Uh, keep an eye out on the channel. Got a lot of really, really cool stuff coming up this year. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving love to the channel by hitting that thumbs up. It's like the easiest thing in the world next to hitting the subscribe button. But I really appreciate it, guys. And I hope to see you on the ice this year. Hopefully we have an awesome, safe, and productive ice fishing season.